I've just taken delivery of a batch of small USB powered battery chargers and basically the circuits that you get in power banks. Quite neat little units, USB-C connection, USB-A connection, built-in charge, built-in boost up to 5 volts. Just wire it straight into a battery and hey presto you've got yourself a little power bank. Perfect for powering your Arduino and things like that. However, you may wonder why I'm making this little video. The answer is quite simple. They don't work. There's a fundamental flaw with them. Let me just bring one in which I have wired up to a battery. Get the right one because I've got a number of them here. That's the one. Here's one I have, there's the camera here, yeah. wired into a battery straight as it comes out the factory. Let's zoom out a bit now so that we can see what we're doing. There we go. I've connected it up to a pair of lithium batteries in parallel. These actually came out of my old laptop battery. I mean, that's the reason why I've got these is so that I can repurpose those old batteries. So in theory, you just connect something up and it works. But no, you get absolutely nothing from them. And why is that? Because of a design flaw. Here's one of them, which I have removed all the components and then sanded with sandpaper to remove all the solder mask. And we can see, if I zoom in, that there is a fundamental flaw with it. If we look at the original one, we've got a 5 volt pin here. That 5 volt, volt pin connects straight to the 5 volts on there. However, if you look at the trace here, this 5 volt pin doesn't connect to anything else. This is the output pin from the chip. The chip is the uh, IP5306. That's the output. Goes through a couple of decoupling capacitors and goes nowhere. That 5 volt pin is not connected. Okay, so it's a simple enough matter, really, I suppose, to connect that pin up. Here's one where I have done just that. Focus. I've scraped back a bit of the solder mask and put a nice big blob of solder on there. This is connected up to identical batteries. Let's uh, zoom back out again. Same batteries, same battery pack. These are all charged in parallel, these batteries, so they've all got the same state of charge. So now, if I connect up my trusty voltmeter, it works, uh, except not quite. 3 volts. It's supposed to be boosting to 5 volts, but it isn't. And there's a very good reason for that as well. If I bring up the data sheet for the chip, I can't read this. Let me turn off a light. That's a bit better. And focus it. And this circuit really should pretty much match what we have on here. So what do we have? We can ignore this block here because that doesn't exist. We can ignore this resistor and LED because that doesn't exist. Um, pretty much everything else should be as it is on this schematic. We've got four LEDs, which is what we see on the device here, four LEDs. We've got the inductor, we've got output capacitors, which are these here. We've got charge capacitor, which is here. We've got the button and its resistor, which are this connector and this resistor here. We've got the capacitor here, but oh, we haven't got 
a resistor that goes from the top end of this capacitor up to the battery connection. Now, that's the battery connection there, that's that capacitor there. There should be a resistor connecting there and there. Let's just focus on the module a little. Okay, let's zoom back on the module. We have the capacitor C7 here, but nothing going between the top of C7 and the battery connection. R4, as it is here. There should also be another capacitor going directly across the battery. But no, that doesn't exist either. Let me just bring my stripped one in so we can see better these connections. So pin 6 is the battery pin. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Pin 6 is the battery pin, which goes to the top of C7, which goes to ground. C7 to ground, that's that capacitor there. There's nothing else at all connected to that pin. So we have no R4 and no C2. Now R4 is of vital importance. Without that connection from that pin to the battery pin, battery positive pin, the chip can't tell what the state of charge is. That's the BAT pin on here, which if I refer to the data sheet which I've got on my screen here, the BAT pin it states is, um, I've lost it now, keep scrolling up, list of pins, come on, BAT, battery voltage sense pin, with no connection to the battery, there's no way it can sense the voltage of, the, of what the battery is. So, we need, in that case, to add a 0.5 ohm resistor, across there. Now I added a 1 ohm because I don't have a 0 0.5 ohm but actually this is two 1 ohms in parallel which gives 0 0.5 ohms between the top of this capacitor and the battery plus. Same batteries in the same battery pack. Let's zoom back out. This one has the connection on the 5 volt pin, it has the missing 1 ohm, or half ohm resistor. And connect the voltage meter and 5 volts. There we go. There's the two things that are fundamentally wrong with this device. The broken trace for the 5 volt connection which means you'll never get an output, and the missing battery sense resistor, which means that it's never going to boost the voltage. So with those two fixes in place, we have a reasonably working device. I say reasonably working because there is another fundamental problem with it. And now I've got nothing on the output. Give it some power, come on. No, nope. not wanting to work. It's completely died. Too much current and it just dies. Let's try forcing it to power up. No, nope. it's gone. And no, 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 yes, no. Thinking about it. Okay, we've got power again. Connect to load. And it dies. Not the most stable system in the world. Let's try without my voltmeter. Focus on the display. Let's try getting it to manually power up. thinking about it. There we go, we've got it to power up. 
Okay, currently on the minimum setting of current for this. It's just about working. If I turn up the current, half an amp. This is supposed to be a 2 amp power supply by the way. 0.7, already we're dropping down 4.9 volts. That's tolerable, it's within spec. We're up to 1 amp so far. Okay, that's fine. We keep going up. Oh, we're already dropping down to 4.89. That's 1.3 amps. 1.4 amps. 4.86. 1.5 amps. And we're dropping right down to 1.6 volts. That's below USB specifications. And oh, any more than 1.5 amps, and boom, gone. Cuts out. Can't cope with it. Battery voltage drops so much that it just can't provide the power. Now, if I were to provide an external power connection to my dummy load, so that it doesn't cut out, we might see some more meaningful results. Okay. This is now powering my load externally, so it won't cut out. If I increase the current, half an amp, one amp, works fine at the moment, 1.5 amps, just dropping below specification. Take it any higher and it just dies. can't go over one and a half amps or it just completely cripples the output and I think though I haven't confirmed that yet that that is because these modules have a two point two micro Henry inductor on them but the data sheet specifies here a one micro Henry inductor. So I don't think that this can actually switch fast enough with that inductor on there to be able to keep the current level high enough at the right, or the voltage level high enough at the right current drain. So there you have it. Once you've repaired and bodged these modules, they work okay up to a point. You can use them up to up to one and a half amps, any more than that, and it will just die and cut out.